Criminality is a bad habit that is deep-rooted in some individuals who do not want to put to use the knowledge that God deposited in them for positive and productive works, but will instead bring others down for their devilish personal gain. Kidnappers spare no one when targeting their prey. They kill, maim, shatter dreams and as well truncate aspirations. They are ruthless during operations and vicious in tactics when dealing with their victims. They act without considering the aftermath effects of their evil greed that overshadows humanity. The FIB and IRT officials of the Nigeria Police Force have once again dealt a massive blow to the kidnapping enterprise as some hardened and notorious criminals were arrested in the penultimate weeks. The investigative police officer, IPO, gives an insight into the atrocious crimes committed by these sets of alleged kidnappers whose operations extended beyond Abuja to Taraba State. They are serial kidnappers that terrorized within Abuja metropolis. We have different victims traced to them, which the first complainer who is a Amafiele, he was picked. He was kept for close to three weeks before ransom of three million was paid. Mire he was paid the following week, they is threatening him to call another ransom. He still paid another three million. Most of them don't care to come and report to the police, but the Kinama will prepare their mind that we know your family. If you go to the police, we will come after them. So presently, they have been arrested. Then another woman, that one was picked within that Kagiri Junction. Even the driver was struggling, the, the, the tire was short. They did not use battle axe to break the glass before the mass was picked. She was kept for three weeks. A ransom of 8 million naira was paid before he regained the, the freedom. Then another man within that uh, uh, local Goma area, the wife was picked, kept for 25 days before he was, he was released after paying 6 million. So we are able to arrest at least six out of the, uh, the kidnappers now. Driving is an old vocation that men and women who could not acquire formal education engaged in to earn a living legitimately. People who take up driving as a career either drive for organizations or a commercial taxi. Unfortunately, these daredevil individuals have turned commercial taxis into a harbinger of criminality where passengers are no longer safe boarding commercial taxis. Harun Abubakar and his cohorts in crime take advantage of a commercial vehicle to perpetuate evil. I'm Harun Abubakar by name, from Kogi State. I met a friend, a friend of mine from, from Kogi State, precisely Mr. Nejo, by name. Then came to Abuja when he graduated from school. And me, when that time, because he came to me that he's looking for a job. So when he came, we were speaking with each other a little bit. So he later bring idea of this, of the kidnapping issue. So one fateful day like that, he called me unexpected that they were going to somewhere then. The car broke up. I should come and pick them from the port. So I came there. They brought a lady to my car, but not by dragging. So we left there. We went to the house and dropped the lady. He told me that he's a girlfriend. So that's I and then uh, later he did it like two days back. He called me to redrop the lady back. We does that. But we didn't end well. So that is how I got quit from the necessity. The 600,000 that I received from daddy, he been calling me all this while, but I've been giving him excuse that my engine of the car is bad. So he said he will borrow me money, if he has money. 
So that is how I got received the money with that. He first sent me 500,000 before, before 100,000 era. Show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. This is the case of an applicant who, instead of looking for legitimate work, joined a kidnapping gang. And they actively participated in some kidnapping operations carried out in Abuja. Listen as he explains his roles as a member of this notorious kidnapping gang. My name is Emma Ojo, Emmanuel. I'm an applicant. I'm into POS business. So I have this friend, Abu, in Abuja. So when I go to Abuja, I call him like, if, although before then, before I came to Abuja here, he already promised me of getting me a job. There was no work in his place to give me. I went into discussion how we can raise money to boost my business. And the idea came of picking somebody to raise money. Uh, okay, how do we start? Yes, we don't have the means of doing that. I have this person that I know that is into hunting, that is a hunter in uh, Kogi State, that's Lokoja. And when I, when I, when I called Abu, Abu came, he came to my place, he picked me, and we, we went to meet him. We went to meet him and Jemilu, and he blocked one car. Then they picked the person, and the person said that we should please, that they don't want problem. They just want to go to his house. Say so, okay, and the aim and say have somebody with that he can send money to. He sent money to the person, and the person now sent money to my account, and we shared it. And the same thing they gave to Abu later that they arrested me. A friend in need sometimes is not a friend. The following case of a suspected kidnapper recently nabbed by the operative of the Nigeria Police Force is a pointer to the fact that legitimate work with little income is better than criminal work with ill-gotten wealth. This suspect is Usman Nuhuddin, a gainfully self-employed tailor who, for the lure of making it big, intentionally became a kidnapper. He joined a friend who promised him a good dividend in the kidnapping enterprise. His role is to guide the victims in the location where they are confined. Listen as he narrates his involvement in the web of crime. My name is Isma Nodin. I'm from Congo State, I'm from local government. This is when I come up here, it's 2015. I come down here to tell you. He gave one of my friends where he did it. The name is Jamilu. So I always they call my place. I don't know they live. They call my place, they go. Sometimes. If I have, sometimes they bring clothes come. I was just they cut for him. I give him some of measurements, everything. The one where I don't know. I was just they tell him how to do this one. So one certain time, he just called me. Around around seven o'clock say that no just go down yet he and most of his friend Abu and a daddy that is uh, Jabu and daddy and Jemilu that my friend and me we go down so as we enter that town but I don't know the place of the place where we go but as the one woman and I just try the motto they go like this, and they block them, the woman, they carry the woman. As they carry the woman, they carry the woman go, go lodge for a big house. So I stayed there three days to four days before I left there. So after three days to five days, they can't pay them. After, after they pay them four million, 
they give me uh, 500,000 to this share of the money. The second one, he collect my account number and get what the opposition went into. But me, I know the among them will do that one. He collect my own account. He said that he own account number and a small account. He collect my first bank. I ran 12 something and the sleep house and he sent 30 million for my two million, two million for my account. The following day, he collect my ATM. Start to collect the money. That is why. Now, one week again, the 1.4 sent to my account to that Jamilo. Collect the ATM and start collect the money. Again, that is why. The following case is that of Ata Enejo, a kidnapped gang member who hid under the guise of being a vigilante member to rob and kidnap. He recounts how his old friend, introduced him to kidnapping. My name is Atai Nejo from Kogi State. I stayed in Lokoja. I'm the repairing of phones and laptop. Last year, June, I received a call from my neighbor, Cyril Nejo. We grew up in the same area. That is where they stayed. Their family is in the same area in Nagba. That is where we all started life from. So when he graduated from school, we met again after a very long time. So I was called down for a business then. So I have to come to Abuja then. So when I came to Abuja, it was late. So they called someone to pick me up, like Jamilu. So we went to the road. So when the car was blocked, they picked the man not by force. So he said he was ready to pay the money. So the next day, they collected the money. They said they needed someone that they can use his account that cannot be traced. So I now called Abudu Wahid Sizu. He came with his friend to Abuja. They collected the money and it was shared. I went back. They gave me 360 then. Joseph Peter would instead use his car for kidnapping in the place of his legitimate commercial taxi work. He also joined a kidnap gang to inflict pain on many innocent people whom they kidnapped and collected ransom. He narrates how his friend called him to join them in a kidnap operation on a Sunday morning while he was in church. Hear his confession. I'm Joseph Peter from Benue State. I'm a driver. I do do within in Abuja here. I'm from Maraba to Zuba. I know this boy called Jamilu from hometown as a fashion designer. So one fateful day, we we'll sit and talk. He tell me about this business of him collecting money from people that he need that kind of say, I don't have such account. So he will now sit and talk about this kidnapping issue that he tell me that this is what he has some friends that used to do. He didn't tell me that, that this is what he did. Though. He said he has friends that used to do all those things because I start asking him about the foreign business that they used to collect account and all those things. See, when he gets to tell me that he has friends that used to do all those kidnapping stuff, and I said, okay, that. See, one faithful Sunday like that I was in church. And I come as I now come in, I should meet him at uh, uh, Lugbe. So when I got to that Lugbe, Immediately I park, I open door and he asked me to like sit back to my driving seat that should go back to steering. So when I enter the steering, they drag one man inside. So when they drag the man inside, they asked me to drive. Get to one village there, I don't know the village name. So when we get to that roadside, about turning like this to the community, they now asked me to stop. So when I stopped, the tall one that I used to call guy came down and asked me to wait at the roadside and wait. So when I wait there, like, he, he's, he, the jibber did not come with the guy. It was only that guy that I came. So he gave me the car and said that our jibber will call me. The second day he didn't come. It was the third day morning. He now called me that I should send my account number. And I sent my POS account. He now sent two, I mean, one something to 200 pounds to that my POS. So the total money he gave me there was 550. So that is my rule. 
Genapping it looks um, growing because as a lucrative business because many many people don't carry security operators along. They don't believe in the system that can actually do it. I don't blame them because kidnappers always work on their psyche. They threaten them to chicken out. Threaten them that come. Don't involve the police. Don't involve the SS. Don't involve the, the military. If you do, we'll kill your daughter. We'll kill your husband. We'll kill your social person. They threaten. And then the, the, the relation will be scared. But the fact is this. I have said it severally. Even if they say, don't talk. Are you going to tell them you are involving the police? Are you going to tell the kidnappers when they call you and negotiate with you? Oh God, I just talk to police now. Me, I don't tell police. You are not going to say it. That's the maturity. That's diplomacy. Okay, yes, sir. I'm not telling police. But you relate with us. We know how to go about this. To understand at least that system is not collapsed. Our system is functional. Our system is not that bad that we cannot even do tracking to understand and get some things and use our intelligence, our gadget to get some information. <laughs>
They now say we should look for a person who, who, who will go use his car. I now see this person. I knew him just two months before this thing happened. When I explained to him, he doesn't understand me. It's the other soldier that explained it to him. When he explained it to him, he now understands. He can't say, to, then go give him 50,000, but made him buy foil for him. And it was that soldier that buy the foil for him. Definitely, that's how he bring that logic for us, that is he a Uber, is that he is going to such one. So when we come, we now see the lady inside the car, concerto. So as it happened like this, he dragged the lady by force to enter that place. It has happened no matter what they said. No one, no one will agree. As kidnappers' dens are decimated and their antics are thwarted daily by the Nigeria police force through intelligence gathering and proactive response, so also persons with criminal tendencies are plotting and staging new ways of kidnapping and demanding ransom from the families of victims. It's a bitter pill to swallow when a friend turns to an enemy, but it's more painful when a lover orchestrates their partner's downfall. How would you feel if you discovered that your pregnant wife, whom you gave money for antenatal the same day, faked her kidnapping and plotted with her boyfriend to extort money from you? This is the story of a housewife who was recently arrested by the operative of the Nigeria Police Force FCT Command led by CP Beneth Igwe along with her boyfriend. She faked her kidnapping. Okay, um, a young lady staged her kidnap and decided to seek refuge or shelter with me. Her husband paid the ransom that she demanded for and she's somebody I do business with, online business and she patronizes me too in what I sell. Um, I'm a businessman so anyway the transactions of how she staged whatever she staged is there. The money was paid into her account and 70% of the money was still into her own account. Do you understand? So. I wouldn't say I did it for the money. I think I did it to help. This woman came in tears. Her recorded messages were, was there. She wanted to, she wanted to take care of um, some people that wanted to tarnish her image online. And right now, I've been able to help her save her own face, and my own face is now out. So. Reciprocity to a proclamation of love can be proven without criminality. The following case is that of a NYSE core member who was arrested and paraded alongside other suspected kidnappers in Abuja for faking his kidnap. Just like Rosemary Uba's incident, Pascal Ako sent panic down the spines of many of his family members and his friends as the report of his kidnap was made known. However, the event took another dimension when it was discovered by the operative of the Nigeria Police Force, FCT Command, that he faked his kidnapping after he was tracked to a hotel where he was chilling and waiting for his own staged managed kidnap ransom to be paid to him. He faked his kidnap, according to him, to prove that his fiance loved him. My name is Pascal Ako. On Thursday last week, that, was, that should be around um, 14th or 15th of March, I was on my way heading to CDS around 10 o'clock in the morning. So on my way heading to CDS, a police officer stopped me. And when they stopped me, they asked for my vehicle license and papers of the car, after which I gave them. After giving them the whole stuff, after checking, they were like asking me where I'm serving. I told them where I'm serving. And they were like, do I have anyone that I can call to confirm my identity? I said, yeah. Then I called my brother. When I called my brother, I told him that a police officer wants to talk to him. When I gave the police officer the phone, the police officer, they spoke, and after some time, all I heard when he was coming closer to me was like, he's calling from state CID and they are taking me along with them, after which he gave me the phone. So to me, I felt like I'll be going with them to the station. So hurriedly, I tested my brother and told him that the police are taking me along with them, after which I ended the call. And the police officer looked at me and said, that I'm very calm, that I should go. At that spot, he let me to go. Then when I was driving off, I forgot to test my brother back to tell him that they allowed me to go. 
So I was just heading to go and do my biometrics as my CDS, please. So after my biometrics, I was hoping to, because my phone was down at some point and then went off. So I was hoping to, after my CDS, to get to a hotel and charge my phone to okay. let him. That should be around, after my CDS, that should be around three, four or so. So I was hoping to get to a hotel to test him or call him that I'm fine. But I didn't even know he was worried. And because he couldn't reach me on phone, that was why I guess he was really worried looking for me. But at that point, I just wanted to, you know, test my girlfriend to know if she really cares about me, to know if she hears the news about me being taken by the police, if she's going to show up or show, like if she really cares about me, because someone I think getting married to, I just want to know her loyalty to me. I regret every day, every moment of my life. I keep regret. I didn't even imagine I'm going to be here. Fighters, promoting security consciousness.